Under the blood-red sky of Kaled stood Redmain Castle, known to warriors across the lands between as the meeting grounds of a magnificent festival of war. It was here in the remnants of battles long since fought that they could try their might to bring down the one who was once called the most powerful demigod of them all, General Radon. Radon was born to Lord Radigan and Queen Renala. Although he had proudly inherited his father's flaming red hair, Radon was more drawn to the heroics of Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, and even adopted his golden lion insignia as his own. Radon's might was reflected by his enormous stature. He towered over everyone around him, and even his powerful red maned knights dwarfed in comparison. But though he was menacing in appearance, Radon had a tenderness to him. Fearing that his massive size would one day inhibit him from riding his beloved but scrawny steed, he set out to Celia, the town of sorcery, to learn the teachings of gravitational powers. Coming from a long line of Karian royal family sorcerers, Radon was a natural. His tutelage was led by an alabaster lord, who belonged to a race of ancient beings with the skin of stone, who were said to have risen to life when a meteor struck long ago. Although Radon had first sought out gravitational sorcery for sentimental reasons, after he completed his studies in Celia, he set out with a new conquest in mind. He was going to challenge the stars. Having become a powerful warrior, it would be an astronomical victory for him. Using his newly learned gravitational skills, he held the stars captive in the sky, withholding their very fate. Following in the footsteps of his role model, Radon had become a force to be reckoned with. He built his fortress in the southernmost region of Kaled. Here he remained with his red main soldiers, masterful warriors that were said to have no weakness. But in the days after the shattering, Rajan's renown would be put to the test in what would turn out to be his last battle. Melania, Blade of Mikola, had been born into scarlet rot, a plague of decay that corroded all it touched. It was this rot that had infected her entire being, and from it she had never known relief. But in spite of it, she was a formidable opponent, the only other demigod to rival Radon in strength. Along with her clean rot knights, she was undefeated in her campaign after the Shattering. She journeyed to the Kaelid Wilds to wage war against Radon and his red main knights. Having been an uncontested hero all his life, Radon had finally met his match. In what would later be known as the Battle of Aeonia, he fought Melania to a standstill until neither could go on and in protecting Kaled from the infectious scarlet rot, Radon himself fell victim to it. It was a war with no victors, one in which the fallen knights would be doomed to continue long beyond their deaths. Although Radon had survived, it was only his body that remained intact. His mind had been devoured by Melania's scarlet rot, and he only existed to roam the battlefields of his former conquests, eating the corpses of his friends and foes alike. He had become a wandering, mindless, terrifying beast. The surviving Redmain soldiers tried to fight back the Scarlet Rot overtaking Kaled. Constructing walls set ablaze with fire, they hoped to keep the Rot away from reaching Redmain Castle. Out of loyalty for their beloved leader, they retained their posts to watch over him. Despondent at seeing their mighty general suffering and crippled with madness, they were determined to give him an honorable death, one worthy of a demigod hero. They concocted a festival in which warriors across the lands between would be invited to participate, all traveling from afar to challenge Radon in battle, to claim glory as well as his great rune. In one last spectacular fight, Radon's might would once again be witnessed. He would die in the only way he had ever wanted, the death of a great warrior. With Radon's death came the falling stars, finally freed from their captor's hold but the mystery of why he had sought to conquer them remained. Had Radon learned something during his studies at Celia, compelling him out of fear to hold back the stars? Was he always just trying to protect Kaled from an inevitable destruction that he had seen was coming? Whatever his reason was, it would forever remain hidden alongside him. The burden of protecting the lands between would now fall to another, for the great Red Lion General was finally free to rest.